because they say it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert in anything. And um, I've definitely covered those 10,000 hours because for at least three to four hours a day, I'm, I'm looking at financial markets. Welcome to Trade Happy. Welcome back to another Traders Podcast episode. Remember guys, if you are new here, to hit the like button, comment below what you've learned from this episode, and also subscribe. Today's trader has over 33 years of trading experience. He's worked with banks, and now he supplies technical analysis to his private clients. Please welcome Jason. So for anyone that doesn't know who you are, can you just tell us a bit about yourself? Sure. Okay. So my name is Jason Sen. Um, I have been in financial markets for over 33 years. I started in 1987 when I was 19 years old. So I'm 52 now. So I'm a bit of an old boy of the market. Uh, it's all I've done really for 33 years. Um, I started on the floor of the London Stock Exchange. Actually, uh, about nine months after I started, it was April 9th. 1987. Well, about six months after, there was a stock market crash. Nine months later, I lost my job as the um, volumes had dried up on the London traded option market, which is where I was uh, learning my tra- trade. Uh, and then luckily, a few months later, I got a job with a market making company. I was originally with a broking company. So actually, that turned out to be a twist of, well, a, a bit of luck for me because I got into market making instead of broking and that's uh, where I wanted to be. So um uh, about 10, 15 years ago, I started a technical analysis advisory business, which was just for banks and brokers. And then obviously the retail market started to take off and I targeted the retail market as well. And now my clients are mostly retail. So um, that's my main job at the moment, really. Wow. Okay. Um, so when you switched over to your own thing, um did you have like any difficulties doing that? Um, was it like an easy process? Well, uh, when I started trading, which I guess must have been 1988, uh, I was an options. I was learning. I learned to trade options through what's called a local uh, company. In, uh, in other words, they traded their own money. So it was a family-owned business, uh, a group, a Dutch group, actually. Um, and the father had done very well trading options in Amsterdam and he'd sent his son over to London to set up an operation and that went pretty well. Um, and I was part of that team and I was learning through them. And then it was their, their finance that paid for my positions. Um, so I, I, I wasn't really on a salary. I was on a split. So if I didn't make any money, I didn't get paid. But obviously if I did make a lot of money, I got, I got paid quite nicely. So. It was nice that I wasn't having to use my own money because I didn't have any in those days. Um, but also, you did sort of feel the pressure of trading your own money because if you didn't didn't do well, you didn't get paid. And it's been the same all through, through my trading career until I was no longer a floor trader. Um, yes, you can start small. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I take, I take long breaks from trading. I don't really trade much anymore. And when I go back to it, I don't, I don't put a lot of money into a trading account, 5,000 pounds, maybe 10,000 pounds maximum. Um, but you certainly wouldn't need to start with that amount. You could start with one or 2,000 pounds. Uh, the key is to be consistent, uh, and, and build it. And, you know, when you're trading and you're looking for maybe, risking 1% on a trade and hopefully getting one and a half to 2% on a trade. Well, you know, if you have two winning trades in a day, you could be up as much as 4%. That's a lot. You know, this, this money can grow very, very quickly if you're cautious and um, consistent. Yeah. So what do you think like a good target is for the average trader to aim for a month? Would you say? Um, well, realistically speaking, Let's say you did three trades a day and you're risking 1% on each trade. Um, you're hopefully going to make a profit of one and a half, two percent 2%. Now, I'm not very good at math, so bear with me. But let's say you have two winners, you're up 4%, and you have one loser, you're down 1%. So you're up 3% on the day. You know, if you could do that 
five days a week, you're not going to do that five days a week. So let's say you do that three days a week and the other two days you win and you know you win and lose the same amount. Well, you're you're up nine percent on the week. That's a pretty good week. You, you know, if you if, if you turn that into four weeks, well, that's thirty six percent, isn't it? And I think that's unrealistically high, to be fair. But it's not unre you know those numbers could work. But I think I you know I don't think there's many people that make thirty six percent a month, obviously. But you know if you, you, what I'm I, I suppose the whole point of me saying this is people think oh you know you've got to risk lots of money on a trade and you you know people are trying to hit the ball out of the park on every trade. You know, you absolutely don't have to do that. You, you do you just risk very, very small amounts of money and try to be consistent and it grows extremely quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so from all your experience, like training traders or whatever, uh, what sets profitable traders apart from the non-profitable traders? Patience, discipline. That's pretty much it. Um, patience to wait for the right trade, to not jump in front of your level. You know, let's say you're trying to buy gold at 1795, which is, I think, roughly where it's trading at the moment. And it get, you know, and it's come down from 1807. It's got to 1797. And you, you know, the fear of missing out kicks in and you jump in. And then if your stops at 1791, suddenly your stops now, um, instead of four points, it's six points. And so your stop is now 50% bigger than it should be. And so your risk reward is now completely out of whack. So, you, you know, you've got to be prepared to miss a trade. So you've got to be patient. You've just got to sit on your hands and wait for that opportunity to come along. And then you've got to be disciplined enough to wait for the target to be hit, assuming your stop isn't. Um, I think that's really it. Patience and discipline. And that's so hard for human beings generally to do. I think a lot of people find training it find trading entertaining. I mean, it is ent entertaining, isn't it? Watching the sums of money go up and down. But successful traders, I think, ma manage to detach themselves from that emotion and from that entertainment side of things and just see it purely as a business. And they just are there collecting pips, collecting pips, collecting pips. And then at the end of the day, they go, oh, you know, look at what I've made. Uh, but it's very difficult to detach yourself from that. Yeah. And do you have like any advice for traders that struggle with that discipline or the patience when trading yeah trade small it's really the only way if you find yourself getting emotional over a trade it's well let's say put it this way if you find yourself in a trade and you're concerned about it not it not going well and you're going to lose money on it it's probably not because your analysis is poor well it might be but um, let's just assume you're a well-established trader. If you're sitting there biting your nails, constantly looking at the market, following it, it, nine times out of 10, I would say that's probably because your position is too big. You're too concerned about the loss. You should be able to put a position on and not be all that bothered if you lose money because you know there'll be another opportunity that will come along that will allow you to make it back and more. Or even if you have five losing trades in a row, which will happen to even the best traders, you know that you'll only be down 5%. You'll still be able to sleep that night or you know at the end of the week you'll still be able to enjoy the weekend and come in on monday and and be ready to go again whereas if you've been trading over trading let's say you're risking five percent trade if you're down 25 percent, now you're in trouble you know now you've got to make a significant sum of money back in order to to cover that that loss you know, well you've got to make 33 percent haven't you when on your um account to get it back and this is then your emotions are all over the place you're stressed you're worried you know, you don't know when you, you're going to be back in the black. So there's only one way to do it, and that's to trade small and be and, and try to be consistent. Yeah. And other than having the discipline, the patience and trading small, what would you say makes you a profitable trader? Um, apart from that, well, you've got to be good at your analysis, I guess, because you've got to be able to pick the right entry points and exit points. If you're, if if you're, if you if you go back, go, go, go back to my idea about you risk one percent to make one and a half percent. If you do that, then you've only got to be right forty percent of the time to break even. So even if your if your if your if your analysis is only forty five percent right, you will make money in the long run. You won't make huge amounts, but you will make money in the long run. 
So to me, it's just a match game. It's just playing the odds. Um, but yeah, I guess to, in order to be consistent, you must at least have a good grip of the of the analysis or have worked on a strategy that has proven itself to be able to be right 50% of the time, let's say. Yeah. And do you think that people should be making their own strategy or do you think they can learn from other people as well? Oh, they can definitely learn. Um, find a good mentor. I think that's true of anything that you do in life, isn't it? Um, you know, you're obviously going to make significant shortcuts if you have a good mentor who's already been through it, made all the mistakes. Like me, I've made every mistake in the book over and over again. Um, yeah, I, I would I would definitely recommend that. But there's also no substitute for experience. So once you've had your time of learning then you should trade a demo account for several months at least and try and treat it as honestly as you can as if it was real money it never you know you're you're, you're in, in your head you always know it's never real money but if you can do that and it's you know the point of doing that is to then just make good habits automatic so you so once you've put your entry order in you automatically put your stop order in you automatically put your target in um, rather than sitting there and punting around and praying. Yeah. And you mentioned, obviously, having a mentor. Um, is there anyone inside or outside of trading that you look up to? Um, there was quite a few traders on the floor that I used to look up to that were very successful. I kind of keep it off to myself these days. and I, I'm on social media, of course, but I don't really follow anyone or... Um, I, I don't like to look at what other people are saying or doing because I don't like to allow it to influence what I'm thinking. So I'm afraid I can't really I can't really say that anyone at this time I follow uh, or I could recommend. Yeah, and do you think that's a reason why new traders fail also because they're they're too concerned of what everyone else is doing and not what themselves are doing. Yes, very good point. No question about that because I've had several uh, new traders come on to me and it's, it's so simple to, when, when a new trader comes on to me and says, oh, you know, I'm not making any money, it's so simple to break down what the problems are because there's only about half a dozen problems it can be. And one of them often is that they are being influenced by what they see on social media, Twitter, whatever. You know, oh, this guy, you know, they bought gold or whatever, for whatever reasons they've decided. And then they're seeing someone else has shorted it, and, and then they and then they freak out and they think, oh god, you know, I'm I can't be right. This guy is short, so I'm going to get short now. And then it, then it goes up, and then they're devastated because they had the right trade on. Um, and I always say to people, what are you doing? Why are you following these people? How do you know they're any better than you? You absolutely can't trade on someone else's uh, tip or advice. And the the reason for that is you don't you don't know why they've decided to to do to do the trade. You don't necessarily even know where they've got in or where they plan to get out um anyway you can't yeah you can't be consistent if you're just following other people's random advice you have to have a strategy and you got to stick to it yeah um so kind of going away from the advice for new traders just for a second if you could choose one year in your trading career that stands out for a good or bad reason um what year would it be and why Good question. Um, one year that stands out for me, because it was probably one of the most successful years, was 1992. There was an ERM crisis, exchange rate mechanism crisis. Um, I'm guessing you probably weren't even born then. <laughs> but um, I was trading on the, on the London International Financial Futures Exchange. I was trading short sterling options. So it was three months money, the LIBOR rate. And... Um, the British pound was pegged to, what was it pegged to? It must have been pegged to the German mark. Yeah, the German Deutsche mark. Um, so the, the idea that was that the government, the treasury, had decided to peg the, peg the um, British pound to the German Deutsche mark because the Germans had inflation under control and had done for decades and the British hadn't. So they thought by doing that, it would force interest rates to be stable and the currency to be stable and we'd have a stable economy and stable inflation. Um, anyway, it didn't quite work out that well because the peg was was not at the right level shall we say i think the pound was pegged 
too high against the Deutsche Mark, which forced uh, the government to keep interest rates artificially high. And anyway, George Soros and some clever people figured out that that wasn't going to work. So they bet against the pound and sold it and sold it and sold it and basically forced the uh, the government to backtrack and remove the peg. And uh, the big story is how George Soros made a billion pounds overnight. Um, needless to say, I didn't. But it was a very volatile time in the market. It was great fun. And um, yeah, there was a, a lot of money to be made. We were just in the right place at the right time. And uh, I really enjoyed that week. Mm, yeah. I mean, that, that must have been a crazy time in the markets as well. Um, yeah, madness. Um, so obviously you've been trading for a long time. Have you been using the same strategy for that whole time? Do you have like multiple strategies that you use? Um, yeah. Um, okay, so when I was trading on the floor, I was an options market maker. And as I said, I was backed by, um, well, firstly, I was backed by a Dutch company and then I moved on to an American company. Um, and as an options market maker, yeah, that was a completely different strategy to what I do now. I thought that I was a clever chap because I was trading options and they were a bit more technical than futures and I thought the trade futures would be easy. So I made the switch. Well, I, options were difficult. Well, you, you, you never, you always had an options position. You, you traded multiple strikes over several months. So you always had spreads on and uh, calendar spreads and spreads within the same month. And if you went on holiday, you were never really on holiday because you always had a position on to watch. So if the futures moved, you, you get as flat as possible, but there was always a risk somewhere. And someone would watch your position for you, but you know, you never really relaxed. I got a bit fed up with that. And in the end, um, when the floor shut, Actually, when the floor shot, I did go and trade options for the American firm. I traded the Italian index options from Gibraltar on screen. And luckily enough, I, I managed to make that transition without too many problems uh, because it was a very difficult skill set to trade on screen from on the floor. Anyway, eventually I got fed up trading options. I just thought I really need a quieter life. And I thought I was, I thought I was smart enough to trade futures and I, <laughs> I so wasn't. Completely different skill set again. Uh, I, Put about thirty thousand pounds of my own money in. I was cocky, quite honestly. I, you know, I thought I thought it'd be a doddle, and that thirty grand didn't last very long at all. I think it was probably a month or two, and I and I thought, wow, this is way more difficult. And I and I had even more respect for the futures traders than I had on the floor. And I realised, wow, if I keep going, I'm going to have nothing left. So I, that's how I got into technical analysis. I started reading books and trying to learn. And that was a long process. It's not something you can learn overnight. Um, and now my 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 futures uh, trading strategy or my forex trading strategies are all technical analysis based. Right. Okay. So if you could describe your strategy in one sentence, what would that be? Uh, very simple. I'm a trend follower primarily. So whether that trend be up, down, or sideways, I, I initially identify the trend. If it's an uptrend. Then I look to buy at support levels when the market retraces based on very simple technical analysis, based on moving averages, Fibonacci levels, trend lines. Um, and I follow the slow stochastic, but not too much else. I've found that you can overcomplicate a chart and just tie yourself up in knots. And then before you know what, every price is a level. Um, so. Yeah, I'll you know I'll look to buy in, on a dip in a bull trend, or I'll look to buy a break above resistance on a bull trend. Um, if it's a sideways trend, then obviously I just try to try to identify the the um, parameters of the sideways trend and trade that. You know, buy at support levels, sell at resistance levels. Really, nothing complicated. There's there doesn't have to be complicated. Yeah, and was it a difficult process to actually create your strategy, or was it something that was that you'd learned somewhere else? Um, yes, I guess it was. I was always looking for the big move. And eventually I had to concede that scalping is the best way to trade these markets, really. Um, I think it was partly out of laziness. I just wanted to be able to put a position on and leave it and make a fortune. And it just never, just very rarely happened. Um, so now I look, to look for trades where I can sort of risk 15, 20 pips in an attempt to make 20 to 30 pips or 20 to 25 pips. I think most of the time the markets are suited to that kind of strategy and you've got to be a little bit more active. But uh, I am quite lazy, to be fair. And if I can get two or three trades off in a day, I'm happy. 
Right, yeah. And do you trade mm. like multiple um, currency pairs or you just stick to one or two? Yeah, I do. And it's not necessarily something I would recommend, especially to new traders. But I do. I, tra I, I follow six currency pairs, gold, oil, three European stock markets and three US stock markets and also the Bund. So I think that's something like 16 markets. I'm not sure. Um, but primarily I do that for my customers. So I've been covering those markets for a decade or more. And as I say, initially it was for banks like Deutsche Bank, Bank of America, uh, Morgan Stanley, um, not all of who are still my clients. Um, and then I sort of tailor the market, my, my commentary at least more towards the retail trader because initially the language that I was using, they didn't understand. Um, but anyway, that's why I cover all those markets because I always have done and I've got subscribers, so I'm obligated to, to, to cover those markets, but I don't trade all of them. Probably only trade at least trade less than half of them. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and if you could give one piece of advice to a new trader, um, what would it be? Uh, take it very, very slowly. You know, people think that trading is so easy and anyone can learn it and you should be able to learn quickly and make a fortune. You really can't. It's a really very difficult thing to do. Um, you know, I've had doctors, you know, intelligent people, doctors and whatever, you know, with, with obviously successful people who have um, made great successes of their lives come into trading and because they are intelligent people and they have done well before, they just think they can pick up trading and, and they'll do well from, from the word go and then they don't because it's a, it's a completely different skill set. It's more about managing your own mind and your own emotion, own emotions more than anything else. It's not about reading the market. It's not about being an expert in figuring out whether the stock market is going to go up or gold's going to go down or the, you know, which direction the market's going to go. It's a case, you know, for me anyway, it's more a case of, especially as a day trader, identifying the strongest support and resistance levels. And as I've said before, waiting patiently for, for those levels to be hit for you to enter a trade, which gives you the opportunity of a low risk trade, puts some odds in your favor. You know, if you're, if the market is in a bull trend and dips to a strong support level and you can, and you wait for it to hit that level and buy it with a 20 pip stop and, and potentially, you know, potentially a, a 30, 40 pip profit then that's all you can really do. You're putting the odds in your favor and every trade won't work. You will get stopped out on some trades, but as I said before, as long as 40% work, you'll break even and if 50% of the trades work, you'll make money. And if your hit rate is better than 50%, you'll do pretty well. Yeah. And you mentioned the mindset. Um, something that helped me with my mindset you know, was having routines. Do you have any routines yourself? Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. I, li I, li I like that one. Um, I see from sports, professional sports people, they have their sort of routines as well. They, you know, a footballer will put his right sock on first or whatever. You know, you know what I mean? We, we, we all hear about that. Even the, even the top guys in, in the world have their rituals, I suppose you could call them. Um, and I do agree with that. I think it is all part of the mindset. I think it's anything that you can do to make your brain feel comfortable, relaxed, calm, and prepared. Yeah, I, and I, well, I'm forced to have my routine. Um, I get up in the morning and the first thing I do is switch on my laptop. I'll make a cup of tea maybe, switch my laptop on, and then I have to deliver my reports on 16 markets before everyone wakes up. So I have a deadline. Um, and that routine has been very good for me. Uh, firstly, because they say it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert in anything. And um, I've definitely covered those 10,000 hours because for at least three to four hours a day, I'm, I'm looking at financial markets and I can't take a day off because I have to deliver my reports. So that's been an excellent discipline. And I think it's almost a greater motivation when you've got people paying you to deliver. You know you've got to be consistently right. They know I'm not going to be right every day, but they, I need to be right more often than I'm not. And I certainly need to deliver my report on time every day to provide a good service. So that discipline has forced me to um, take the whole thing very seriously, I guess. Yeah. Um, and obviously you've got your clients. Um, where do you see yourself in I don't know, three to five years with your business? Do you have like any plans or goals that you're currently aiming for? 
Yes, I do. Um, I haven't been trading much lately. I came to Thailand about six years ago. I bought some land here and I decided to develop it, which was probably the stupidest idea I've ever had because I'm not a developer. I'm not an architect. Uh, I don't know anything about building. Um, I sort of redecorated a few places in London that I'd owned before I left England when I was 30. Anyway, some stupid reason I thought it would be a fantastic idea to come here and I built seven villas. Well, I've got away with it. But my God, it's been hard work and it's taken every penny that I've, I've earned. And um, anyway, I'm out the other side. I, I thought I was now going to be sitting back and the money was going to be rolling in through Airbnb rentals. But of course, COVID-19 has put a stop to that one. So I now got mostly uh, seven empty villas that I've just built. Um, and uh, they're not producing any money. So um, it, what it does allow me is, is uh, some time. Uh, again, uh, get some sort of life back because that was 12 to 14 hours work every single day. Uh, I've had a decent break over this whole COVID thing and been able to spend a lot of time with my children, which is the number one priority in my life as it is for most parents. And now I'm kind of itching to get back into trading. So um, I want to, uh, over those seven years of, six years of building, I did try to get back into it every now and then and I just, just couldn't. If you if you're trade if you're going to trade you've got to really pretty pretty much just trade. You can't do you know if you've got a full time job. I have I have customers that have full time jobs, but the way I structure my my trades is that I kind of like I call it a set and forget. So you enter your order, your stop limit, your stop level, and your target, and that allows you really to just check on the market once an hour if you if you don't have a lot of time. So I thought that I could do that whilst I was building houses, but I really couldn't. It was just way too much going on. Anyway, so now I'm quite keen to get back into trading, um, but I'm going to start very, very, very small. Uh, I'm going to few, you know, five, 10,000 pounds, as I said before. Um, I'm, I'm going to be trying to make hundreds of pounds, not thousands of pounds. Um, and by doing that, I will then post all that on social media and show people how they can make money trading my strategies. And uh, maybe I can grow my subscription business a little bit and maybe I can enjoy hopefully making some small profits from trading too. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of leading on from that. On one of Etienne Crete's podcasts, you mentioned that you ran like a little experiment with your Twitter followers um, and that you traded a, a 2K account and ran that up to about 15 or 16K if I'm correct. Like what was the strategy for that if, you can remember what that was um and was it like a riskier strategy um yes i did do that i've done that two or three times actually um when i found myself with some time over a two or three month period no it was pretty much the same strategy that i've always used so really just trading support and resistance levels but to be fair um the two grand account i was trading being bigger than I would have advised anyone else to do. So I was doing exactly what I tell people not to do, and I was risking probably 10% of trade. Um, but it was more for marketing purposes than anything else. And actually, those um, those um, examples, when I did that two or three times, they worked out way better than I expected. I really didn't expect it to go that well. Um, it was good fun. But I, I, I'm going to try not to do that this time. I'm going to try and keep my discipline. I, I just don't need stress in my life anymore. That's That's the truth. Um, and as soon as you, you know, trading, the problem with trading is it consumes you. So you start out being disciplined and patient and keeping the numbers small and then the market draws you in. So, you know, you, you'll decide, right, I'm just going to look at the market every hour. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm going to try and do two or three trades a day, blah, blah, blah. And then before you know what, after two or three months, you're looking at 15 minute charts. You're doing three trades an hour. You know, this is what it does to me it draws you in it sucks you in and it's, and it's difficult to keep your distance from the market so i've got to try and do that because yeah i've i've been through a lot of stress and i don't <laughs> i don't want to go back to a stressful trading life i want to go back to just as i said before stealing a few pips here and there mm. so we'll yeah from all of your experience how can an average guy or girl trade successfully okay um, firstly, make sure you get with a reputable broker who has got um, realistic spreads, because I know that is a problem. 
Um, yeah, there are and uh, there are some reputable brokers out there who don't actually make money by being on the opposite side of your trade. Uh, whereas most of the brokers out there do. I'm not saying the brokers that are on the, the all the brokers who are on the opposite side of your trade are are not reputable. But put it this way: if you have a if you if I've got five clients and I know what all their positions are and I know where their stops are, I may be tempted if I was unscrupulous to push markets just a little bit further to trigger those stops if I know that that money is going to drop down into my pocket. And I do believe that there are brokers out there that do that. Well, I know there are. Um, so firstly, find a, um, a reputable broker with tighter spreads than others, um, preferably one that doesn't take the opposite side of your trade and who actually therefore wants you to win. And I can certainly recommend people on that because I've got friends who own companies like that who are reputable um, and, who, and who don't take the other side of the trade. Okay, so that's number one. That, that gives you a fighting chance. Number two is study, study, study. You know, you can't just uh, turn your computer on, open an account, put some money in and think you can start trading. People th people think, well, you know, I, I, if I buy it, I, I'm either going to lose or make. It's a 50-50 chance. It's not. It doesn't work like that. Um, it's not like, trading is not like betting on the spin of a wheel or the roll of a dice. It's not, it's not a binary outcome. It's not a win or lose situation. Once you open a trade, there's multiple different outcomes. You know, you can get out a, a range of different prices. Um, your stop can be hit or you can get out before your stop's hit. Or you can, in the worst cases, you take your stop, you remove your stop because you think that the market will turn around and you don't want to, you know, be pushed out of the position. And of course, there's, or you can get out of half the position when you're in profit or, you know, a certain percentage of the position. Hey, there's, there's a multiple of different outcomes. Um, so it's, it's it is difficult and you do have to figure out a strategy that works not only that works mathematically but also that works around your lifestyle so are you in a full-time job um are you you know driving around most of the day so you can't access your device to check the markets or are you you know whatever you're doing you, you know do you tend to wake up five in the morning or at nine in the morning all these things are factors in how you structure your strategy do you like trading volatility or do you like trading narrow ranges? Are you a scalper? Um, there's a there's a million different strategies. And yeah, certainly you have to take your lifestyle into account when devising one. And I've got like one last question, which is mm. what's some non-conventional advice that you'd give to a trader that wants to succeed? I think that you've really got to take a long view. You've really got to think, right, let's say we're going to start trading today. You know, firstly, you've got to study for at least a couple of months. I personally would advise learning technical analysis. It's, it's good to learn the fundamentals, but I don't think the fundamentals allow you to time the market. And if you're a day trader, that's what you are doing. You're timing the market. So you may be well, you know, you may well be aware that, and actually fundamentals have gone out the window lately. I'm going from a tangent here, but fundamentals have so gone out the window lately, you know, with the Fed just printing money and buying everything. I mean, you know, I, it seems it's just absolutely absurd to me. I don't really think you can make sense of any financial market at the moment. So personally, I would advise anyone to study technical analysis, um, get to grips with that. Then I would suggest that you um, definitely trade a demo account. And I would suggest for at least three months and try to treat, treat that demo account as seriously as possible and try and pretend to yourself that it is real money. And as I said before, you're really just... That is an exercise in trying to firstly establish a, a strategy that works for you and secondly um, to ingrain good habits consistently so they become automatic so that you're like a robot and i think i've mentioned this before as well you know do your analysis when you've got no position on uh, so i'm not actually i don't think i'm actually answering your question i think i've gone off on one but um <laughs> but um but do your analysis when when you don't have a position on, because otherwise it's too easy to, oh, I'm long the euro, US dollar. So you're looking at the euro, US dollar chart and you're looking for any evidence that supports your position. You, you know, you're not, you're not, mm. you're not looking at it independently. So I would certainly advise that you look at markets. Yeah. When you've got no position on and you're not emotionally involved or financially involved, uh, then pick out the levels of the day that you think are the best. 
and for that you need to look at the weekly chart the daily chart the hourly chart four hour chart maybe even 30 minute depending on your um time horizon depending on how long you'd like to hold a position for um yeah and then as i say practice on a demo account practice good habits practice your strategy practice waiting for for the right levels and being patient and disciplined and practice managing your account properly so you don't risk too much money um, managing your trades properly so that you trail your stop at the right time um, and you take profit you know you might decide that you like to take profit on half the position when you're up one percent because that satisfies your need to feel like you've got some money in the bank and you might then decide to run the rest of the position to the next target you know as i said there's a multiple of ways that you can exit positions and enter positions you might like to some people like to get in over a range of prices some people like to buy only one price um yeah and then once you really feel confident that you can trust yourself i suppose that's the key can i trust myself can i trust myself not to trade too big trade too frequently um can i trust myself to take profit when i should do can i trust myself with my own money and when you think that you can then start small put in what is a relatively small sum of money to yourself and um, and then build it slowly and if you find yourself getting over emotional getting angry or stressed and worried about your position or even overly excited when you make a profit then you need to look at yourself and say hang on a sec why am i getting over involved in this i'm like i must be trading too big thanks for coming on to the podcast today um is there anything else that you would like to say and also where can people find you Oh yeah, I've got to plug myself. <laughs> okay, so um, my name is Jason Sem, S-E-M. Um, if you Google me, I'm, I think I come up for about three or four pages of videos and interviews. Uh, my website is daytradeideas.co.uk. Um, I'll give you my Skype as well, which is J- Jason Sen, J-A-S-O-N-S-E-N. Um, and if anyone wants to contact me on Skype, I'm always happy to help new traders as I happy to give free advice whenever i can mm-hmm. so and i'm on twitter which is uh day trade signals okay i will put all those in the description oh thank you i've got a youtube channel and everything else but if you google my name then all those things come mm. okay great <laughs>